towards that smoke-free future. Thank you, Mr. Sharma, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. It's a pleasure to speak in this important debate. It has been great to hear the large degree of consensus across the House on our ambition to secure a smoke-free future. Let me take a moment to thank the member for Harrow East for securing this debate and for his work with the all-party parliamentary groups on smoking and health. And I also welcome the new minister to her place. Thank you to the members for City of Durham, North Antrim, Strangford and Bladen for their powerful contributions on why we need a smoke-free future and the health impacts that we currently are seeing, but also offering some very practical solutions. As we have heard today, Mr Sharma, smoking is an absolute blight on the health of our society. The global burden of disease has found that despite the fall in smoking rates in recent decades, it remains the number one risk factor that causes premature deaths in England. In 2019, tobacco caused an estimated 125,000 deaths in the UK. That is one person every five minutes, a staggering statistic on average, smokers lose 10 years of life. Not only that smoking is an expensive habit, as we've heard, it is three or four times more common in some of our most deprived communities. If everyone qu quit tomorrow, it is estimated that it could lift one million children out of poverty. And that is to say nothing of the impact on the economy. Not only is it that another cost to our NHS, but action on smoking and health have estimated smoking costs, the United Kingdom, £32 billion in lost productivity through lost earnings, unemployment and early deaths and another £15 billion in social care costs. The evidence is overwhelming that for the future of the NHS, the economy and the health and well-being of the country, smoking is bad for Britain. As Primary Care and Public Health Minister, I am determined to drive the prevention agenda forward, which has received many warm words from Conservative MPs and Ministers in the abstract, but very little way of action over the past 14 years. For Labour's part, we have set ourselves a clear mission to reduce the number of lives lost to the biggest killers and realising a smoke-free future will be integral to that. Smoking, of course, is the leading cause of cancer in the United Kingdom and it is strongly linked to cardiovascular disease, which is highly preventable, yet causes one in four deaths in the United Kingdom and 15,000 deaths from heart and circulatory diseases can be attributed to smoking every single year. So Labour has set clear targets on both cancer and CVD. We will improve cancer survival rates by hitting all the NHS cancer waiting time and early diagnosis targets within five years, so no patient waits longer than they should. And we will reduce deaths from heart disease and stroke by a quarter within 10 years. Building a smoke-free future will be key to this to help more people make that journey. That is why we welcomed the Khan Review when it was published in 2022, and we were pleased to see some of the recommendations taken forward. I won't use this debate to discuss the government's smoke-free generation legislation. We shall await to see the government's response to its consultation when it is published, but perhaps the Minister can today share the timeline for this. To be clear, the opposition supports phasing out smoking over time, and we encourage the government to get on with it. When we proposed phasing out smoking, some Conservatives attacked us. The member for Blackpool South, who sadly can't take part in the debate today, called it health fascism and an attack on ordinary people and their culture. I would ask those members what freedom they think there is in addiction. In the average 10 years of life lost by smokers compared to non-smokers, or the millions of children growing up with parents who smoke. It's a shame that the Prime Minister has failed to convince his MPs of the argument for these reforms and is calling a free vote. But he can rest assured that Labour will vote to see this through. As members have highlighted today, this legislation cannot be a substitute for smoking cessation services and other public health measures. Two-thirds of adult smokers started before the age of 18, and this legislation will come too late for them. So adults who have smoked for years and have not managed to kick the habit need help too. So does the Minister share my concern that local government funding for stop smoking services and tobacco control has fallen by 45% since 2015? Has she assessed the impact of this against the 2030 ambition? And can she provide an update on when the major condition strategy will be published? One of the clearest cases to do more on smoking is the impact on children. There has been good progress in recent decades to bring down maternal smoking, but there is more to do. 9% of mothers were smokers at the time of delivery last year, still some 50% above the government's 6% target, and at the current rate of progress, we will not hit that goal until 2032. 
It is why, as part of Labour's Child Health Action Plan launched today, we would make sure all hospital trusts integrate opt-out smoking cessation interventions into routine care with a named lead on smoking cessation so parents have all the support that they need to quit and every interaction with the NHS actually encourages quitting. Children born to households that smoke are more likely to be born with heart defects, to be born underweight or to grow up to be smokers themselves if they grow up at all. Smoking in pregnancy doubles the likelihood of stillbirth. It increases the risk of preterm birth and miscarriage and trebles the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. The health of Britain's children should be non-negotiable. And for my part, I want to ensure children born in Britain today are part of the healthiest generation to have ever lived. But to do that, children deserve a smoke-free start. So can the minister tell us on what she's doing to ensure that every expecting mother is offered the smoking cessation support they need and that partners, as we, as we heard from the member for Harrow East, are also encouraged to quit as well? For far too long, public health has been either an afterthought or a battleground on which to have ideological arguments. Strategies have been announced and binned in short order, health inequalities have widened, and the long-term crisis in the NHS has deepened. But just as the last Labour government delivered one of the most significant public health interventions in history in the smoking ban, the next, the next Labour government will grasp the smoke-free challenge. We will get serious about prevention, deliver equitable access to, to smoking cessation services and take on tobacco companies that profit at the expense of public health. As part of our Child Health Action Plan, Labour will make sure Britain's children get the happy and healthy start in life that they deserve. Recently, a school in my constituency had to apologise after handing out a leaflet to a child suggesting smoking as a health measure. Absolutely shocking and bizarre. And this is why Labour's decision to legislate to make tobacco companies include information in tobacco products that dispels the myth that smoking reduces stress and anxiety and to crack down on those businesses marketing vapes to children. So we will ensure that the incremental ban on smoking comes into force so that the next generation are not addicted to tobacco. The last Labour government led the way in tackling smoking and the next one will do so again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Sharma. It's a pleasure to be speaking under your chairmanship today. 